Hello everyone. Uh, welcome again. Today we are going to be discussing Fefu and her friends. Uh, let's get this started, shall we? So this play, Fefu and Her Friends, is by Maria Irene Fornes. She uh, was born on May 4th, 1930 in Cuba and Havana, uh, immigrated to the U.S. In, uh, in 1945 at age 15. Um, she dropped out of high school, did not ever attend college. Uh, she died relatively recently, um, October 30th, 2018, in New York. And this is obviously a picture of her when she was young. Um, she is uh, one of the most uh, influential uh, Latinx playwrights, or playwrights in general, uh, in the 20th century. Uh, in 1961, before writing too much of anything, she originally thought of herself as more of like a painter. Um, she helped Susan Sontag, uh, her partner at the time. Uh, through a writing slump by going to their apartment, opening a cookbook, and starting to write a short story based upon the first words of each recipe. Um, and so they were out in uh, New York in Greenwich Village kind of looking for a party, and um, uh, Susan Sontag was expressing difficulty, and uh, Maria Irene Fornes said, all right, let's cancel our plans. We'll go back. I'll show you how easy it is to write. And this was before uh, she even wrote really too much of anything. Uh, she says, I might never have thought of writing if I hadn't pretended I was going to show how Susan, or to show Susan how easy it was. <laughs> uh, and of course, this is her uh, later in life here. She received eight Obie Awards, uh, as well as numerous other awards, including uh, she was a finalist for the Pulitzer. Um, now, if you don't know what the Obie Awards are, um, it, I'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about Broadway. Um, but did you know that uh, the Tony Awards are not for theater in general? The Tony Awards are just for specific types of plays, Broadway plays. Um, and in order to be characterized as a Broadway play, you have to be in a certain area of Manhattan and have a certain number of seats. Um, now, if you produce a play in New York and it does not have that certain number of seats or it is not in those certain venues, um, it is called Off-Broadway. And the Tony Awards are only for Broadway shows. The OB Awards, OB for Off-Broadway, right? The Off-Broadway Awards. Um, so she received eight awards for the uh, non-Broadway New York theater scene. Um, and uh, one of the things that she's known for was not just her um, actual plays, but also for her teaching and advocacy. From 1981 to 92, she was the director of the INTAR Hispanic Playwrights in Residence Laboratory. Um, she, uh, a lot of her students ended up uh, becoming writers themselves and uh, Latinx students winning on awards and uh, Pulitzer's Tonys, that kind of thing. Uh, she wrote this play, Fefu and Her Friends, in 1977. Uh, she says, I'm a feminist in that I'm very concerned and I suffer when women are treated in a discriminatory manner and when I am treated in a discriminatory manner because I'm a woman. But I never thought I should not do certain work because I'm a woman, nor did I think I should do certain work because I'm a woman. Um, and you'll see some of the, the feminism or at least relationships um, that women have to men and uh, femininity and womanhood is a central theme of uh, this particular play and many of her plays. Um, Paula Vogel, another uh, influential and famous uh, 20th century uh, American playwright said, in the work of every American playwright at the end of the 20th century, there are only two stages, before she has read Maria Irene Fornes and after. So let's talk about this play. And so it premiered in 1977, um, directed by the playwright, um, she decided to set the play uh, during the Great Depression instead of in the modern day um, because, um, you know, two, two things happened um, uh, since 1935 uh, that she did not want to have to integrate into her play and she didn't want to necessarily be seen as reflections of that or have to deal with the characters um, talking about that. So one was uh, Sigmund Freud's ideas really came to the United States um, after 1935. And she wanted her characters to, uh, uh, in a way, speak to each other freely without having to uh, interpret through their own lenses what the others were saying as much. But uh, uh, the feminism and gender politics in the, 19, in the late 1970s were um, a very specific kind of political force. And she didn't want 
the characters in her play to be thought of as reacting to kind of these modern day um, in her, you know, in her time, modern day feminist uh, uh, movements. And so uh, to set it before um, that kind of second wave feminism uh, allowed the characters to kind of be, to have their individual uh, relationships with um, uh, uh, femininity and womanhood um, and not necessarily represent political stances per se. Um, it, there are no men in this play at all uh, that come on stage, but they take up a large amount of the psychological space in the play, right? Um, the very first line is my husband. The second word in this play is husband. Um, but uh, Fefu says, my husband married to me to have a constant reminder of how loathsome women are. So immediately you are uh, setting up this play with the very first line about um, uh, the relationships between men and women. And also uh, not just kind of um, a normative, right? But definitely there is value, right? The first line, uh, there is a um, right and wrong characteristic to men uh, and women. Also Julia's hallucinatory monologue in bed about how men are human and women are evil and how she's uh, trying to learn this prayer and internalize it for these uh, unseen um, manifestations of these judges in her mind kind of slap her around. And of course there's Cindy's dream uh, that she tells others where she's hounded by these various male figures. The play also has to do with uh, women's relationship to societal expectations of them as women, right? Um, Fefu wishing that she were a man, she goes and cleans a gun and unclogs a toilet and uh, these sorts of things, which are um, kind of thought to be less womanly really. Um, and of course, there's the covert lesbian relationship between Cecilia and Paula. Um, Fefu is actually, or sorry, not Fefu, uh, Maria Irene Fornes um, was inspired to write this play because of a Mexican joke. And the joke goes that there's two Mexican men in sombreros sitting um, by each other at a bullfight. And one of them uh, says to the other, hey, you see that woman? She's really beautiful. Um, that woman in yellow. He points across the way and the second one says, wait, which one? Because there are so many. And the first man takes out a gun and shoots her and says, the one that falls over, right? And uh, Fornes was struck by how this kind of skewered, um, you know, uh, uh, lat Latino uh, kind of hyper masculinity um, and the kind of the toxicity of that. But she decided to write um, uh, originally in Fafu, right, where she and her husband have this game where she pretends to shoot him and he falls over. Um, in the play originally, it did have reference to the um, to Mexican heritage of that joke, but she decided to take it out to, um, to not have the kind of racial politics go on because these, um, these women are, you know, Anglo. They're, you know, in Fornes's words, Anglo uh, in New England. And I wanted to, I wanted to um, focus a little bit on the non-traditional staging in act two, right? Um, so as we all know, as we've read it, um, acts one and three are traditionally staged, but act two, um, she splits the audience up into four different groups and has each of them cycle around to, you know, uh, a different room where these different acts or these different scenes of the play um, happen. And of course, Notionally, they're all happening simultaneously because characters enter and exit through them. But so if you were in a group, perhaps you would see part three, then part four, then part one, then part two, or you could see, you know, part four, then part one, then part three, then, or sorry, then part two, then part three. And that has hints of some immersive kind of staging and reaction with it that um, I'll talk about um, when I talk about kind of uh, a contemporary non-traditional theater. Um, she was asked uh, if this is a feminist play um, for Ness. And she said, yes, it is a feminist play. This play is about women. It is a play that deals with each of these women with enormous tenderness and affection. I have not deliberately attempted to see these women as women have rarely been seen before. I show the women as I see them. And if it is different from the way they've been seen before, it's because that's how I see them. The play is not fighting anything, not negating anything. My intention has not been to confront anything. I felt as if I wrote, as I wrote the play that I was surrounded by friends. I felt very happy to have such good and interesting friends. Um, so great, I hope you all uh, enjoyed reading that play. Um, 
and yeah, I will see you all next time. Oh, incidentally, you may have seen this um, on my neck. Um, this is a scar, or this is a wound, or an incision. I had surgery um, on Monday um, to repair a herniated disc in my cervical spine. So that's what that's about. Um, and that's also why my voice is a little bit more um, subdued and raspy, because I had a, a breathing tube down my throat when I was under general anesthesia. And so my throat is a little scratchy. Um, anywho, this time for real. Uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, don't forget to take the quiz.